Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you and catch up with you today. We think it's very important to, uh, to give you some regular updates uh, as the playing field for learning keeps on changing. And obviously, we, we keep getting uh, new updates about restrictions and uh, the situation under the, the virus. So today, we've got a, a few things that are very important to speak to, but we'll just start, um, start off as a, is our tradition uh, with a prayer. So we'll make the sign of the cross together, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. And we keep in our prayers, our thoughts, and our hearts, all those people that, uh, that are struggling and facing adversity during this time, those people that have contracted the COVID virus and those unfortunate few people that uh, have passed away as a result. Remember the context in Australia, but across the globe and the challenges facing many of the European countries with a very large number of deaths and cases each and every day. And we are thankful for the country and the place we live in. We might ask our mother Mary to be with us and say the whole Mary together. Hail Mary, yeah, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Okay. St. Patrick, pray, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And we'd also take the opportunity to acknowledge the traditional owners of our land, the Darek people, the first inhabitants of where we work and where we learn. And for those places where you are occupied at the moment, the traditional owners of the place where you live. We pay our respect to elders past, present and emerging, for they hold the memories, the traditions, the culture and hopes of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across the nation. We acknowledge the deep spiritual attachment relationship of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples of this country, and we commit ourselves to the ongoing journey of reconciliation. In particular, remember that this week as it is NAIDOC week, uh, which we have written about in our, in our newsletter. Um, we also acknowledge, importantly, our patrician heritage, our rich story of our Catholic faith entrenched in the spirit of our school and our commitment to hospitality and welcome as part of that tradition. Well, to start today, obviously, um, is a, bit of a few formalities. Uh, as you would have heard, uh, the extension to remote learning has been put out another two weeks till Friday the 30th of July. So we are formally locked down in that mode of learning uh, for um, to the end of week three. So we've been working with our students and our staff to make sure that they clear those expectations. But one of the things that we are, have been doing and we try to plan ahead is look at the impact not only over that short period of time, but for the whole term, the whole series of work programs, uh, outcomes and assessment that need to be covered during that time. So one of the things that we do is we actually plan in two week cycles. Our classes happen over a two week cycle. So our learning for online, even if it did were to end at the end of week three, is really planned to the end of week four. And we'll commence that cycle if there's an extension to the lockdown. Uh, and based on the communications and figures, uh, we have to plan ahead. So we're again planning ahead that this lockdown will maybe be a bit longer than Friday the 30th of July. One of the nice things, I guess, from a, an educational perspective is we plan ahead and then we're back earlier, then we can always use those resources and catch up. And so it's not uh, a wasted exercise. It's actually uh, very advantageous because we know students will be at different points at that point of time. Although we'll be working with you in partnership, of course, to make sure that all our students stay on track and have learning and support at their point of learning need. One of the things, I guess, that's really, really important, again, was... Um, reiterated by the health minister today, but is, is, is that we need to stay at home. So unless there is a significant reason not to be at home, then we are hoping that students will be at home. If there is a need for them to be here, please communicate with us, let us know. Uh, there's a link in our newsletter, so I encourage you to read the newsletter available on our website uh, to register your, uh, your child if they do need to be here. And it's important protocols around that that we discussed last time that you know, we'll continue to keep you uh, advised of and again outlined in detail on our website in the newsletter uh, about COVID safe procedures and if students come that they need to be here for the whole day and they need to obviously comply with uh, the lockdown restrictions. Uh, particularly information about staff and students from the Fairfield area, that those, those people in the Fairfield area please stay at home. Um, again, we may need to make sure that we are adhering with the New South Wales health lockdown requirements. 
So please read the newsletter. And the other thing is that our communications, as we mentioned last time, and I think Mr. Blomfield will, will reiterate, happens via our school bag app. So we really need to make sure that um, you're accessing that app and that if you haven't or you need assistance, please contact the office. Um, we know the challenge of learning at home. We've had communication with parents who have rung us for some clarification and assistance. I'm just going to ask Mr. Blomfield to go through some important tips and information in relation to, again, supporting your learner at, at home. Uh, a couple of guides and things that we do as educators that, um, that maybe we might take for granted from time to time, but it's good to share a couple of the strategies we use in helping support learners. Thank you, Mr. Blomfield. Well, hello. Uh, parents, family, friends and students of Delaney College, uh, welcome to our update for this week. Uh, I'm going to take you through just a couple of points and the first one is um, about learning at home and that, that challenge, great challenge we had some practice last year and we continue it this year. Um, when students are at school, there is a very structured environment in which they work and that's not always the case at home. So our first point is that we, we challenge and I suppose ask you to help students feel as though they are in control when they're at home. Um, so what I'd suggest is there are four lessons every day and just have a really simple piece of paper on a fridge or on the table of lessons one to four and get down some of the structure that we're going to talk about. When does the student have to be online? So we've asked students that it's compulsory attendance in year seven to 10 for the first lesson of each week of each subject. So if PDHPE runs on Tuesday next week, and that's the first time it runs in that week, then Tuesday's the day they attend. Uh, if that was Monday, it'd be Monday. <clears throat> the subsequent lessons of that subject uh, are then up to the teacher and the students. That so could be optional, there could be a short compulsory piece. But having a list of period one, two, three, four, and Monday, they should all be compulsory for seven to 10 because it's the first lesson of every week. Just that allows you to support students in terms of being ready to uh, link and for them also to know when, when and where they should be. Um, in addition to that, years 11 and 12, all lessons are compulsory for you to attend for some or all of that lesson. Now, certainly it's compulsory for you to start and that teacher might say, here's the work, go and do it. As we said in our first update, we really asked teachers to keep the teaching to 10 to 20 minutes, no more, and then leave work to be done. So there's plenty of work, uh, even though the lesson itself might not run for the full 75 minutes of our normal lessons. Um, encourage the students to work independently um, so that they're making some effort before they reach out. And I'll talk about reaching out for help in a second um, and be clear about where where they can go for help. Can you help? I know as a maths teacher, many parents say to me, I'm out of here, I can't do that maths. That's okay. Um, our teachers are available for support. The study space um, is a really important one too. It's, many families find it difficult to find an appropriate space or a quiet space. So whatever support you can give to your children to just give them some space um, to find a quiet place. You know, and if they're, if they're in the middle of lessons, um, you know, minimise the interruptions as, as far as you possibly can in your family space. Having said all that, and the importance of attending classes, having a break is also part of that. Um, and, and I know on Thursday, like yesterday, uh, Mr. Peranacci, our sports coordinator, challenged students in the sports classroom to spend four minutes of physical activity during the afternoon. Uh, I like to think that many of our students did that, but I'd also like to encourage you and them to get out and walk around the block. We're allowed to do that. Um, and that also means that they're not on devices all day. Um, even in the learning process, to, to spend five hours on a screen learning is probably not appropriate either. So a bit of a mix and a match. It's okay for students to make mistakes as they, they go through this process. And those mistakes are, I went to the wrong Zoom, um, I, I forgot to get this piece of work done. I don't know what to do here. Um, really, the learning happens when students make mistakes because it's the correction of those mistakes, which is when the learning um, gets locked in. So encourage your, your children as they're working through this to keep trying. And resilience is a big part of 
good effective learning. Know when, when it's, it's appropriate for you to get involved. And really the challenge is they'll want you to give the answers as they want us to give them the answers in classes. And our job is to resist, 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 and try and lead them towards the work we want them to, to get done. So with that in mind, um, you can all put your teacher hats on and, and suggest and scaffold and ask what's next, what do you think might be happening next, uh, and resist as long as you can, providing answers for students. Uh, and that's what, as it says there, we call the zone of confusion or proximal development, where we're just trying to make the students take that next step up. So teachers will provide scaffolds on Google Classroom and through all the work that we're doing anyway. So there's always a next step available. And of course, they can always contact the teacher um, during their Zoom or via email. Next week, we are trying to check in with all of our students in a pastoral sense and check in to make sure that there's a good well-being. Um, so on Monday morning at 9 a.m., uh, I'm about to send around a link for all students to attend a mentor class meeting. That's from 9 till about 9.20. We would just like to see the faces of every single student during that time um, and just provide some, uh, I suppose, some dialogue with us uh, are there issues that, that those children might want to flag with us? The feedback we've got colloquially around the place is the students are engaging pretty well in the online learning this, this time around. They're, they're, many of us and them are experts at it, having had some practice last year. So it's really pleasing to hear that so many students are actually online and are actually completing the work, but the, main, the expectation remains and will remain while ever we're online but also keeping in touch with wellbeing is a really essential part of that, where we're mostly locked at home. On Wednesday, we would normally have a college assembly. And again, our house coordinators will provide a meeting time. This is not a compulsory meeting, but again, it's just an invitation for students to pop in in a remote sense and say, hi, Miss Whitfield, hi, Miss Ortiz, hi, Miss Matabja, hi, Mrs. Casey. Um, here's what's going on in my life at, at home. So we really encourage students to, to get involved, definitely in the first one and optionally in the second one. Um, and as it says here, we have on-site um, supervision available. So I've said before uh, in the last one, there are no teachers here predominantly to actually do work directly with your students, uh, with your children, our students. Supervision is available, but you know, staying in range of the New South Wales health regulations, as Mr. Easton has already said. So last two things, stay at home if, if, uh, if you possibly can. And if failing that, uh, students are welcome to come. It might be worthwhile considering for some students that they attend one day a week rather than every day a week, just to give them some space to come here, you know, get good internet access. Um, however, having said that, there's a couple of rules they must follow. Um, they must wear a mask all day and they must be socially distanced all day. And, you know, that's a challenge for, for students who like to interact normally. Um, and there's no canteen facilities and we certainly can't allow Uber deliveries and the like for food. Um, if, again, as we said the other day, if your child is actually sick and can't do the work, please let us know because we don't want to see them penalised for not uh, participating in the work if they're not, if they're not well. Last thing I'd say, and we've spoken about school bags, so I've, I've included in this slide a little how-to. School bag is the primary way in which we can communicate um, these events in our newsletters and you know, excursion notes, et cetera, with you directly. Um, what we've done today is advertise this, and we'll share the link of this via an SMS text. Uh, in the future, we won't be using SMS to publish these links but we'll do it all through school bag very simple process um, whether it's google whether it's apple um, just go to your apps page download it find delaney college and there we are so very simple but can i ask you at the, as you watch this or at the end of this uh, jump online and get that app because it's a critical way that we can uh, stay in touch with you and that's doubly important uh, at this stage so thank you, God bless you. I hope your families remain well. I hope your students remain, uh, your children remain on task. Don't hesitate to call us if there's anything you need. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, Mr. Bloomfield. <clears throat> Can I just take a, a minute to just say uh, a big thank you to everyone, uh, particularly to our to our staff. Uh, the work they are doing in supporting students learning at home is fantastic. Uh, the, the communication and the planning that's gone into this has been uh, of, of the highest order and their readiness and willingness to be there to respond to students uh, almost on, on demand, but you know, obviously within a reasonable period uh, to support their learning in their, in their request. Uh, I really have to take my, my hat off to thank them for, the, for that work and that commitment. Can I thank our students? Of course, uh, their participation and particularly those in my, in my couple of classes, um, really, really been very pleased, very proud of the way you've interacted, be, be the responsibility, um, making sure that you get your work posted online uh, and up into Google Classroom and checking those emails is, is very important. So thank you to the students, of course. Uh, the few students that have been at school have, have really followed the rules and regulations. Uh, it is great to see students here, but again, we are very restricted and there's very, few, very few staff actually on site. Um, and we're obviously trying to min minimise mobility as the Premier has asked. Uh, so that's obviously our, our first priority, um, particularly given our proximity to some of those uh, hotspot LGAs uh, of Liverpool and, and Fairfield um, and uh, Canterbury Bankstown. Can I also thank you as parents? Uh, some of the communication from parents has been excellent. The work that you're doing to support your child's learning. Uh, again, we really appreciate that. As we know, we're working together. We, we, we're co-educators of children uh, each and every day, but at this period of time, even more so. Um, and it's actually a really great opportunity uh, for, for you to see the work that the teachers and your child are doing. Um, so whilst there are certain challenges around this mode of learning, it also gives you a, a really good insight to the work that we do together with your child. Um, so there's always a silver lining in some of these things. So thank you very much as parents for, for supporting that. If you do need help and you, you are unsure, uh, please email staff here. Um, our house coordinators have a very critical role in maintaining and checking up on students as well. Every student should be in communication with their teachers. And if that's not happening, then you will receive a phone call to make sure that uh, we do get on top of those reasons and understand. And on that note, if you have difficulty with accessing a, a device for learning or the internet, please contact the office. Um, if you know of someone who's having trouble and they're not going to see this communication, please let us know. Um, we're, we're happy to help and make a phone call. Um, we can only assist if we know. So you can't fix something if you don't know it is it working. So please, um, if you do know of families that may not be able to access this information, uh, or, or contact. We would normally through our processes, if we've not been in contact with someone or heard from a student, we'll be following up anyway. And that's part of our ongoing partial support through this, this pandemic. And I'll also say uh, we very take very seriously that we work together, not just with the learning, but with the, the whole well-being of your child and your family. If you are having difficulties around finance and school fees, I'm aware that notices went out in terms of fees, please contact the office. It may take a bit of time, but someone will get in contact with you to, to help you if you're experiencing some distress. And again, if you know a family that's in distress, we've been working with um, Father Andrew and the parish around what we do to support families. Uh, we, we are aware that you know, some families are very financially challenged at this time to the extent that they may struggle to put food on the table. Now, if you do know of any families, because often people won't ring up and ask for help, uh, please let us know and we'll make contact and we'll see how we can support them. Uh, the well-being of, of your children and, and your family is very important. And, and we are in this together. We are a community. And one of the key aspects of our patrician heritage is how we can be hospitable to one another and help people, particularly when they're challenged. And finally, um, I would just like to remind people about 2022 enrolments. If you do know of someone that is seeking to enrol, I know it's probably not the time they're thinking about it, but those processes still need to go forward. Uh, so if you're looking for someone in year seven in 2022 or other year levels, we have some very exciting programs with our 151 Academy program for years nine and 10 students and our school-based traineeships for students uh, through our partnership with Cath West. Uh, are very uh, unique opportunities in this area. So if you know people that may be interested in that, again, contact the office and we'd be happy to speak to you about how we can help your child on their pathway to success. Thank you everyone and uh, we wish you well. Please, if in doubt, please get in contact. Um, we're here to work together with you and we know we can get through this together. God bless and thank you very much.
I'm just going to ask, are there any questions? If you have a question, um, you might want to put that onto the, the Q&A or chat window there. I'll just give it a, a couple of minutes. Okay, it doesn't seem to be any, any questions coming in. Um, if you do have one, please email the, or contact the college. Uh, your teachers, house coordinators, students are there. And well, I think we do have a question. Someone's put a question in the question and answer box. Could you use the chat function instead? Because we can't access the Q&A. Yeah. So we did have a question where that was put, we can't access. There's a chat, chat box. If you could just copy and paste it into that, that would help us. Just while we're waiting for that, um, just as Mr. Blomfield mentioned, there's two very important pastoral check-ins next week. So as you're working on your week planner with your, your son or your daughter, uh, 9 a.m. Monday is a Zoom meeting. They will receive that email shortly uh, with their, their mentor teachers, and then they have a house pastoral check-in on Wednesday at, at 12 p.m. So very two important items to be placed on their, their calendar. It was a thank you. Oh, the question was a, a thank you. So thank you very much. We, as I said, we're, we're very pleased to be here to help. And I know that we can make the most of effect of this opportunity and that the learning will be very effective. And again, hats off to the students for the way they've approached this. So thank you very much. God bless.